Peace of Power. This is Big Brother Sight calling out of Dallas, Texas. One third of the Panther Party Eight. I got my brothers in here with me. Uh, the other two brothers that make up the Panther Party Eight. 48. I got Brother E, our Minister of Information, Emma Ridges, and a day one member of the original New Black Panther Party here in Dallas, Texas, that was structured and formatted by Aaron Michaels and David Foreman. Brother E, peace. Word. I got, uh, and our Minister of Information, uh, uh, Meredith. I'm going to get that right. Our Minister of Information of Meredith for the Panther Party 8. I got my brother Robert Wall. Good Williams job. Calling out of San Diego, California, who is uh, currently the chairman of the San Diego chapter of the Black Panther Party and the, na the national uh, chief of staff of the People's Black Panther Party headquartered out of Atlanta under Chairman uh, Yang Nkrumah. And also a day one uh, member of the New Black Panther Party, uh, organized under David Foreman and Aaron Michael out of Dallas, Texas. Peace, Brother Walk. All power to people, everyone. And, and one quick correction, since we are dealing with corrective act, uh, corrective uh, history, not day one, because day one would go back to 1989. I came in around 1994. It's true indeed. Now, the reason I call you day one. Because what a day one is separate from a founder. So I'm gonna call and during this conversation, I'm, I'm gonna call those brothers that started in '89 as the first wave: David Foreman, Aaron Michaels. Uh, I think they had another brother named Eric with them. What, am I right? No, uh, I'm not sure if I knew Eric. It was uh, Keith Anderson, Nathan Anderson, okay. uh, Na Najee Muhammad. Okay. So you a zero day exploit, boy? That's what he meant. But then it. when I go to when I go to phase two, I'm talking about us coming into the party when we came in the mid nineties and, and so forth, so on. But anyway, I'll uh, tell you what I don't like about what they did. I'm gonna tell you about the legacy, goddammit. <laughs> so today's discussion is is prompted by Brother Babu Amawali, the uh co founder, one of the co founders of the Hugh P. Newton Gun Club. He threw his hat in to be elected as national chairman of the new Black Panther Party. Uh, evidently, Dr. Malik Zulu Shabazz has decided, is the brother a doctor? Or did I put the wrong uh, title on the brother? No, he called himself Just, a doctor. Okay. Uh, Malik Zulu Shabazz, uh, who had been uh, national chair over the new Black Panther Party, has decided to step down, and brother Babu Amawale put his hat in the ring. So today we decided to check out that video and give our commentary on that video and our thoughts on national leadership, national organization structure, uh, the history of the New Black Panther Party, where the, where the New Black Panther Party has been, and where the New Black Panther Party is going. So that is today's discussion. So to start this thing off, I think it was, it's very important for us to talk a little bit about how the organization formed. We're not going to get into a deep history of this because we've talked about it already. If you want to know that, we have two videos uh, talking with the founder of the New Black Panther Party, Aaron Michaels, on the channel. So you should check it out and it'll give you a deeper detailed history. We also have a video that will be uploaded by the end of today. So by the time you see this video, it's already on the channel that we had an in-depth conversation with uh, the brother David Foreman, who was one of those founding members of the New Black Panther Party in the, in the late 80s. So if you want to get a deeper history, deeper ideas of this, then you can watch those videos. What we're going to give her is just a quick, concise understanding because we recognize that many people don't really know how the New Black Panther Party started. When they think of New Black Panther Party, they only think of Dr. Khalid. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, as, as great as the brother was, and with all the due respect that we have for him, was brought into the New Black Panther Party after it had, after it had already been founded and work had already been done in the, in the organization. So we're going to get a little a, a, a concise history of it. Uh, mostly we're going to lean on Brother Wolf for this. Brother E, you can jump in whenever you get ready if you, if you have anything to say on this. Damn history. right. <laughs> well, I, I expect you on the commentary. But Wolf, the foreman of the organization, can you give us a quick breakdown of how the, of how the new Black Panther Party was started, when, and where, and who? Well, it was started in Dallas, Texas in 1989 by Aaron, Aaron Michaels. Aaron Michaels at that point in time was a uh, program, a radio programmer for a, a, a show called Talk Back by um, Commissioner John Wiley Price. There was 
political issues going on in the community. And uh, and um, uh, Commissioner uh, John Wally Price was was keeping the community abreast of that. As a result of that, uh, prior to 1989, you, you had a group called themselves the Men in Black, who was basically uh, a bunch of community uh, people in the community that basically went out and did protest and tried to bring attention to some of the things that John Wally Price highlighted on the show. With the consistency of, of the people that went out and protested, they ultimately decided to go ahead and form themselves uh, under the new Black Panther Party. Aaron Michaels at the time was in contact with several uh, people that was a part of the, what we call the third development of the uh, Black Panther Party. Uh, and from that standpoint, one of the, one of the people that he uh, was in conversation with heavily was Mike McGee, um, as well as the Ruba Ben Wahai. So one of the things about that is when Aaron Michaels attempted to form the new Black Panther Party, there was already also a beef going on in Dallas in regards to the third development attempting to uh, two of the members of the third development, uh, um, Fahim Minka and Marvin Crenshaw, who was in the process of trying to get a, a grant to the city to develop a skating rink on the, the Black Panther Party. So. Aaron Michaels, because he was attempting to come forth and and re, and, and re revitalize the what was going on with the, the the black the Black Panther Party by forming by forming a Black Panther Party, that basically uh, created a a situation where it put a damp on what they was attempting to do, and that led to the first publicized <laughs> uh, situation that called strife that basically came against. Where, they, where he couldn't get the blessings of the of the, some of the local people that was establishing the Black Panther Party because they was trying to uh, get a grant going. Because of that, then Aaron decided, well, let's go just just call this the new Black Panther Party. So that's the whole point behind how the new part got added to it because he was attempting to reestablish the Black Panther Party here uh, at the time in Dallas, Texas, but couldn't get local support. So Aaron Michaels established the new Black Panther Party in 1989. Uh, and we've had Aaron on the show and I would rather us have him on the show again to just actually hear it directly from him. So to me, that would be the best uh, point for that. But what the people have to know and a lot of the people, for whatever reason, it gets lost in history is the fact that the organization, the New Black Panther Party, was founded in Dallas, Texas by Aaron Michaels and had already been a national organization before Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad came on board. Mind you, it was not nowhere near as large as it was when Khaled, when Khaled came on board because uh, Khaled, Dr. Khaled Muhammad brought basically brought uh, whole mosses on on board with him, which is a whole nother story that we may get into a little later. But the deal is, is the people that were under the, the leadership of Aaron Michaels when he was at the helm, the national helm of the new Black Panther Party in the early days, were people that was purely interested in the development of the, the legacy of the Black Panther Party prior to it getting off track and becoming what most people may know as the new Black Panther Party today. So the founding principles, which is what the Panther 48 always get into, uh, are the legacy of what initially started the new Black Panther Party, which is not what it is today. And so as we get deep, deep in discussion, we're going to talk about some of those things that a lot of even a lot of the the majority, I would say, the majority of the uh, members in the new Black Panther Party don't even know in terms of the framework, because one of the things that a lot of people are not realizing that uh, they, that they blessed with just right now is that the Panther 48 make up the predominantly uh, writing force of what was constructed to be the operating manual of the new Black Panther Party that did not make it all the way across the nation. It became the Black Power Manual that. Uh, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad was 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 crafty. Mind you, that manual that became the National Black Power Manual was based on the operating stuff that we were doing in Dallas, Texas, because, again, it was already up and going, already a national organization and already happening before Khaled as a national organization. And so that's just something to keep in mind. And, and as we move on in other videos, we we'll dive into d different aspects of that as needed. Okay, appreciate appreciate that breakdown, Walt. Uh, you know, you would love to jump into the future about the question I'm going to ask next. But okay, we know that the organization was formed in 1989 by by uh, Aaron Michael. Then it wasn't founded by Colin and Malik. No, nah, they came they came maybe by 
almost shut your mouth late. for real. Yeah, yeah. They came. They came about right. ten years late. They actually came after you. They oh yeah, came. that's right. I was yeah. there before them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now you talked about the uh, the time before they been the writing force behind the manual. So I'm gonna talk about the second phase. I'm not like I say. This is not a video for this. I just want to get a little history in. I love to break down the origin of things before we build on the things we're going to build on. So we had the first phase, which was the men in black, and then the founding of the new Black Panther Party, and then the structures that those brothers set up, set up and the fights that they, that, they, that they fought. Then you had a second phase, which essentially makes up us coming into the party, the, the youth, so we were the youth at the time. You coming in first war, and then bringing me, uh, Eve, brothers like uh, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Woods, brother Third, uh, uh, and many other brothers, uh, Ali, uh, 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 what is brother Craig, and many Eugene. other brothers that came to, to the court. Eugene, but Eugene, Eugene was there when we showed up, but all those brothers. So we make up the second phase of the new Black Panther Party. And Aaron Michaels made you, I remember this, made you chairman of the Dallas chapter, and then established David Foreman as the National Minister of Defense. And maybe you can get into more greater detail than that, but Aaron himself, uh, uh, we're gonna talk about that when we get to the college, so let me not jump ahead of myself. So can you tell me a little bit of, of the original ideology of the New Black Panther Party as it had already been established and running out of, out of Dallas, Texas, um, a, a little bit of that original ideology, if you don't mind. Well, uh, later on, I want to definitely go into more or less a slideshow that, that kind of talks yeah, about. Yeah, we want you to go into detail, but we just but, want to give a, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But right now, what basically really look at the original ideology of the new Black Panther Party, really just picking up where the Black Panther Party left off. One of the things that Aaron emphasized is that as a result of the 10 point platform not being fully f fulfilled, and still being relevant because we are still not free as people that what we recognize with this new generation of Panthers is that we must pick up the banner and continue the work of what needs to be done as as Panthers. So with that, Aaron actually constructed a 14 point platform as opposed to the third development having a 10 point platform. Aaron Michaels had a 14 point platform. And in essence, it's the same thing, but it just broke down and gave more details of different things that were uh, necessary for the black community, especially as it applies to the fact that you, during that period of time, we was at the height of the crack epidemic. And also that, that, at that during that time is when things started coming out in regards to the black community, again, being flooded with, with crack cocaine and the whole conspiracy behind that. So one of the biggest deals we were dealing with in Dallas, Texas, was the fact that because of how strong the crack had epidemic was across the nation. There was a whole lot of internalized violence and black on black violence happening and obviously po police corruption and everything like that. So one of the major, major operations that the new Black Panther Party was dealing with was uh, patrols on, on dr against drug dealers to try to shut them down in the black community. Again, a lot of this stuff don't a lot of people don't know. I have no idea if members of the new black panther party nowadays go out and 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 patrol and try to stop drug dealing from in from in the community but the thing is those was one of the things that the new black panther party was founded on in terms of uh the work that was being done just like how the black panther party for self-defense initially started with patrols against the police the new black panther party one of its primary things was patrols against crack dealers and so that is some of the the uh, the founding elements of the new Black Panther Party, and it was really just like how the original uh, third development party was in terms of, of community service programs and 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 in engulfing ourselves within the community in teaching and political education. All of those things were required, and and you had to be very active in the community at that point in time. The whole thing that kind of ended up taking on a, a life of his own in terms of the, of, of the weapons then come into play really in terms of, of it reaching the level of, of exposure that it did into we, in, 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 until we did the uh, situation in, in Jasper, Texas, where we dealt with James Byrd Jr. But the new Black Panther Party in Dallas, Texas, and, 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 um, and I would say Houston, and I would, I would say uh, Fort Worth, 
we already were dealing with with weapons and armed maneuvers, but the armed maneuvers wasn't something that was what that was the height and highlight of our operation. That's not what it was about. And primarily, we dealt with that to protect ourselves against drug dealers. And that and, and that's the part of the thing a lot of people don't know. And I remember, you know, the, the, uh, I had value to that statement. I remember when he got arrested and they took his, uh, they took his AK or was it SKS, one of them. Uh, I, think, I think it was in Forest Hill for uh, riding with his weapon. Cause we, like you just said, we was already dealing with on the news. This is something we was already doing. And, and we went and we protested on in front of the Forest Hill police station with the basic premise or the basic ideal of our protest being that if our brother was 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 in violation of the law and you arrested him and took his weapon, then we are in violation of the law and now you have to arrest us and take our weapon. But they didn't and they couldn't because we weren't in violation of the law, which means that Brother E wasn't in violation of the law. Go ahead, Brother E. Oh, just real quick, two real quick things. First of all, sitting here listening to you say that shit, it just dawned on me after all of these years that for one night, one motherfucking night, I was a political prisoner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like with me and all the mother cats. Yeah, that's me. So what I hear you saying is the armed maneuvers differ from armed protests in that we weren't there to show up we weren't there for the limelight we weren't there we were there with a particular intent and purpose with a goal and and, and a specific outcome in mind mm -hmm. hence the word maneuver a movement not going out and yelling to the press and everybody hey look at us we got guns as it's become but more so uh okay along the lines of malcolm when he's when he and the brothers showed up in front of the police station and they lined up behind him it was a maneuver. It wasn't for show. It was, we're coming, we're imposing our will, and you're going to do what it is we want you to do, period. So that's the difference that I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. Indeed, indeed. Now, you talked about the ideology that that first wave brought forth, Aaron Michael, David, and all those brothers. And those were our elders and our mentors, essentially, while we were developing the organization, because essentially they passed the organization of us. They made war chairman and then war from me and E in it made E Minister of Information. If nobody, if you know E, then you probably know why he was Minister of Information and made me Chief of Staff. And, uh, and if you know Sight, you probably know why he got made Chief of <laughs> Staff. <laughs> and so, so we started reformatting a little bit of the things in the party, restructuring all these things. Before I ask this, let me ask this. You say, you say Aaron created a 14 point platform instead of the 10 point platform, and change the changes was made once the new Black Panther Party was started. Why? Which some people would say, oh, they prostituting the legacy. Oh, they're changing things. Oh, things should be exactly how it was in 1966. Do either one of y'all got a, got a comeback to that? Why would he change it to a 14 point platform? Why, when we was, uh, took over basically, the direction of the party. Why did we make changes that were made? Why would that be necessary if we're trying to stay on the lane? Well, I would I would start off with the fact that one of the biggest misconceptions that people have is that the the information that we utilize is crystallized. So we realize within the new Black Panther Party at that time and still operate from now in terms of Panthers is that the information must be living. The documents, the, the manuals that we operate from, the information we teach is a li is, is living and, and breeding and has to apply, be made applicable to everything that we're dealing with right right now. And so from that standpoint, the platform was changed simply because it needed to be modernized to reflect the situation that we need to come with now in terms of Panthers operations. That's it. It had nothing to do with trying to. Uh, this, you know, a defame or discredit or, or come down on on what was done in the third development. It has all everything to do with it. What do we need to do now? Go ahead, e. Go ahead e. So what I'm hearing then is that Aaron Michael's legacy to the party essentially was a uh, uh, constant growth, development, adaptation to one's surroundings and the battle that's afoot. And historically, uh, the New Black Panther Party got its uh, platform and built on 
from QNM. QNM got theirs from what the nation and the nation got theirs from Garvey. So none of this is, is new. It's just a new adaptation as it goes. And when we joined, they, in essence, whether they knew it or not, were instilling a sense of the need uh, uh, underlying everything else. Everything else we talked about is cool, ideology, blah, 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 blah. But <clears throat> underneath it all was this need to always grow and develop because the struggle, the movement, the war that we're facing, the battles that we face are ever changing and ever growing. So that would be their legacy, I would think. Um, we just took it and ran with it and pushed it to in directions and in ways I don't think they foresaw or understood, um, hoping that, you know, the next generation would be the same. So the legacy of, of Brother uh, uh, Aaron and the founder, Aaron and Brother David, uh, was to be that that change. You can't change the world if you're not willing to change yourself, essentially. Exactly. And, 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 the, and the thing about that is that that just just that one meet that you talked about right now has been lost in terms of a lot of the current operations um, of what we, what you see with the new Black Panther Party. And the reason for that is that things have went into a decline because the essence of realizing that the organization must stand on a foundation that must be built upon instead of eroded and destroyed went away. So, so what I hear you saying is that since, <coughs> since all them days with the tumult, with Aaron leaving, you uh, uh, coming into the, the chairmanship and essentially Kyla being on top and then passing it uh, as far as the national, passing it on to Malik, that we've lost as a whole, this, or if you can call it a whole, that the New Black Panther Party has lost its ability, has crystallized and lost its ability to move and, and, and change, which essentially is uh, because even Hugh and them, Malcolm, all of us, um, that 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 current of change that underlies it is the current of being a, a guerrilla organization, because as that type of organization, you don't sit still and stay. You constantly move and flow and ebb and change. And if I'm understanding correctly, essentially what you're saying is that the party moved away from after Aaron. As a whole big structure moved away from its ability to 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 duck and dodge to do Ali and bounce back and forth and, and miss the punches. We got flat footed, stood still and started taking shots to the, to the, to the dome. Would that be accurate? That would be accurate. One thing that, that often gets quoted is, is in, in, in whether people like to hear it or not, is that's when people refer to it as the hijack. <laughs> I told y'all, I told y'all. Oh, my bad. My bad. I'm trying real hard. I'm trying real hard. So, so, and I'm gonna move to this. I'm gonna move to the discussion that I think is important. Before I say that, when we uh, took over the steering wheel of the party, we sat down. Us three specifically, we sat down. We had other brothers that that helped in the daily maintenance of the party. But as far as the the ideology, the the, the organizational practice, we sat down and we structured a new way of organizing the party, uh, 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 a different way of understanding the like. Uh, one of the main things that we created was the, essentially we can call it the Black Power Ideology, which was nothing new. Again, like he said, we went into history and went and got everything that our people attempted to build the movements on, Pan-Africanism, Black Nationalism, Ujima and Ujamba, which is essentially African communalism, uh, 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 what is it, uh, Black Liberation. We went and got all, all these things and we kind of brought them together because we had an understanding that all these, these, these different aspects was needed in order to move to our liberation. A lot of times our organizations think that it's only black nationalism that they need. But that's it. That's the key point. That's it. Malcolm said it. that got to be it. You know, they think that my black liberation theology is what's going to liberate. So we, we brought this together. I'm not going to get into long details, though, but we brought this together. Then we created the mechanism structure. Which, is, which at the time, and even that has evolved and grown and changed, but at the time, it was uh, based on the, the four basic mechanisms that we felt that, that the party needed in order to run, in order to operate as a revolutionary organization and its duty to the community. And that was the defense mechanism, the, uh, what was it, the defense mechanism, the economic mechanism, the uh, information mechanism, and the information mechanism. 
I got you. I ain't, I ain't got them. And the heads of those different mechanisms was the Minister of Information, the Minister of Defense, the Minister of uh, Finance, and we created a brand new title that had never been heard of in the Panther organization, which is the CLO, the Community Liaison Office, because somebody needs to be a liaison between the party and the people that we are here to serve. And, and the brother that we chose to do that was, was a naturally uh, friendly type of individual as far as when it comes to dealing with the people and doing that community work. So those are a lot of the things that we brought in the chain, into the party as far as change when we were starting to steer with at this exact same time, brother, brother Khalid came into the organization. So how did that happen? How, if the organization was already formed, already up and running, members was already doing the work, and it was already national. And one of the things that we always stress that I don't forget is we always stress local autonomy. So even though the organization was, was national, we didn't try to control what was going on locally in Houston or what was going on locally in New Orleans. Even when we went to Jasper, we tried to build a chapter there. And one of the problems that we found out was that black people there didn't, didn't know how to operate locally. They could only be what, what passes when we was there and we didn't have a structure for that. For it's actually controlling every chapter. We had a structure for educating you, giving you the information, giving you the structure, and lead, leading you to organize your community, local autonomy. But so Dr. Khalid came into the organization around this time that we were creating this new structure. How did that happen? How did Dr. Khalid come into the organization? And what effect did he have when he came into the organization? All right, I will. I start and then I'll let you jump in if you want. Uh, Khaled came in as a result of a relationship that uh, a brother that was sometimes uh, assisting us in terms of just um, counsel. Uh, his name was Thomas Muhammad. Thomas Muhammad was uh, friends with a lot of different people nationally and internationally. Um, and he introduced us to uh, Khalid Muhammad once Khalid, when, when Khalid Muhammad basically a uh, 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 assassination attempt that took place on his life uh, when he was in the Nation of Islam. So one of the safe houses that that he operated through happened to be in Dallas, Texas. And so Thomas Muhammad came to us and asked us to do round the clock security for Khalid while he was, you know, tucked away in his safe house because he, you know, already had a relationship with us. As a result of that, Khalid was was very inspired by the discipline that we had brought to the table and what he saw with us with the weapons. And so him and Aaron, you know, started forming a friendship behind that. And so Kyle would come into town and and um and start making this one of the places that he would would operate through. And with that came obviously the media and the press that, you know, followed Kyle throughout what he was dealing with with the Nation of Islam. And at the same time, this is also, when Kali was was under uh, being basically um, silenced by uh, Louis Farrakhan as a result of some of the things that he did, I think would call with the King's College, uh, college uh, speech. Um, and so at that time, Kali was basically getting ready, going through suspension. And so while he was going through suspension, that gave him more opportunity to start working more so, you know, kind of just tagging along with Aaron and working with us. And so he kind of just started. Uh, just trying to do it, you know, being an influence within Aaron, uh, Aaron and his and his leadership. So over time, they formed a good relationship. And as Khaled was seeing that things wasn't working out with him in the Nation of Islam, he basically decided work with Aaron and they decided to expand on the the new Black Panther Party. Um, and even before that, I would say this, that there was an internal meeting amongst the members of, the, of of us and we was just trying to decide if it was a good move. We saw pros and cons. Uh, little did we know in regards to that, that the power influence in terms of how hard it would be to keep up with the current ideology and structure of the new Black Panther Party bringing Khaled aboard. But one of the things a lot of people don't know, like I said, prior to that, we were already uh, a national organization. The New Black Panther Party had formed a, a partner relationship with the with uh, L.A. Uh, some of the cast from the third development who was called the Black Panther Vanguard. Um, and through that relationship, we had became the New Black Panther Party Vanguard. Um, 
uh, and and through that relationship, we was again already nationally already operating. And then when Kali came aboard and Aaron decided, hey, let's go ahead. And, and, and mind you, this is something a lot of people don't know. It was a mutual decision that Aaron said, hey, you be the national, uh, uh, the, the, the national chairman and I'll be the national minister of defense. It was not that Kali came aboard and instantly became that. They both agreed in terms of the position because at the time, the way we operated, with the field maneuvers and field tactics and the field operation, the minister of defense was the one in control of the field troops. The chairman was more or less in control of, of the strategy of the organization. And Aaron had trusted Khaled with that. But realizing that when it comes to how we actually get down and operate in the field, that Aaron Michaels had control over that. And so that was how we was expecting from that standpoint, the ideology to continue moving forward with the organization. One of the things that we did not anticipate and see uh, fully was the fact that once Khaled, uh, Khaled basically said or uh, was kicked out of the nation, however that went, is that instantly because of the amount of people that that relied and, and fell under the teach teachings of Khaled Muhammad, that we instantly they transitioned from mosque to new Black Panther Party chapters. Problem with that, and it should be clear that the problem with that should be is that if you go from your religion and spiritual backing and you now make that your community activism, there is going to be issues with that transition. So when instantly you have mosques that become Panther chapters, there is going to be a problem because these people are following a person in terms of how he provided their religious or spiritual insight and guidance. Not because of the community activism, not because of the need to serve the people, which was the founding principles of the, of the new Black Panther Party, but because they loved and honored Khalid Muhammad. So right then and there, you have people that are, that are getting involved in community activism, not because this is in their best interest and they see themselves need to be held accountable to community activism and serving the people, but because they wanted to follow a person. So it was more or less a messiahship. And so over time, you would think that or I think it was assumed that they would fall in line with the ideology as opposed to falling in line with a person's specific teachings and, 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 and spiritual insight. So this is where we ran into the problem, because all of a sudden you have the, the same method and the same things being taught that was in the Nation of Islam transpiring throughout the new black panther party which is not at all how we rock and roll all of a sudden you had situations to where you have a, a previous organization which is basically in dealing with internalized growth and 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 uh spiritual and religious growth from that standpoint now happen to hold themselves accountable for community activism which is not something they were doing and so there was going to be resistance to change because the type of change that you were requiring is a whole different type of change and makeup of that person. And so us doing the work that we was doing in the community in, in, in terms of uh, community service for the people is not at all, nor can that be something that you transition from, from a religious point of view and perspective. It was always said when we went within the ranks of the, of the, Black, of the new Black Panther Party prior to college is that leave your religion at the door you do not step into the in, into here with your religion because your religious background has no bearing on 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 your on you being a black person being oppressed in this community in in the black community as well as the work we was doing in the community it had it was it had nothing to do with your religion and so when all of a sudden you have that uh, strong of an influx of people that come in because they're following a person who was their spiritual leader and guider and follow him because of that, they aren't matching what they in, should be doing as New Black Panther Party with the person that it, they're following in, in doing what he's doing. And so you have this national conflict that's going on in terms of how the Dallas chapter is operating because it is operating off the founding principles and the principles and operations of what it means to be a Black Panther. And then you have those people over here who are trying to find themselves amongst a spiritual leader who now has become the national chairman of a community-based uh, organization. 
who is still clinging to and, and, and in essence still fighting for his leadership position and his position within the nation of Islam and the new Black Panther Party became caught up in old in, in, in that gamut in, in, of politics. And so there's a different type of fight happening with their leader. But all these people know is that they're following they're following their, the, uh, the person that brought them in. And so a lot of the stuff that was being done from that standpoint from these chapters were emulating who they, they saw to be their religious religious leader, not realizing that the work that needs to be done has nothing to do with a, a specific individual. It has to do with what needs to be done within the community, which predates Aaron, which predates Khaled in terms of what it means to be a Black Panther. And so that's the thing in where a lot of this mis miss up and manipulation and, and destruction came about. Let's do a recap. You know, why we get long winded. I'm going I'm to get into that either way, why you went too far again. But I'm going to do a quick recap before I let E jump in. A quick recap so I can make sure the listening audience understand what's being said. Aaron Michael, much, Aaron Michael started New Black Panther Party in 1989 with David Foreman and a few other brothers right next to him on his side. Started building an organization connected and co connected with people nationally to get insight, guidance, direction, things of that nature. Somewhere in the mid 90s, then a, a new group of younger guys, us, uh, old men now came into the organization and he gave the steering wheel of the organization to those younger guys and we started building locally because one of our number one tenants was local autonomy. That was one of our number one tenants back then. I, I heard it almost every day, every time I was in a Panther headquarters, every time I was in a meeting. I'm going to give just a quick breakdown. Before me and E came into the New Black Panther Party, E and uh, Brother Isaiah was operating as the NANM, New African Nationalist Movement, doing the police patrols, doing the uh, the, uh, the boycotts of stores where a little kid, black kid, was killed by a store owner, things of that nature. And I came into, when you introduced me to Brother Edem, when I moved out to Fort Worth, and I started doing those work with those brothers. And then we finally transitioned that organization just into the New Black Panther Party period. But get back to the point. So then somewhere, you never said the date, can you give me a, like a date of when Dr. Khalid came into the organization? Was that like, that was like 98? 98? Yeah, that's, that's right, at, right at Jasper. Yeah, that's yeah, right at the Jasper time. So Dr. Khalid came in and he had built this relationship with Aaron because when he, when the nation or when whoever attempted to assassinate him after he was kicked out of the nation, then the New Black Panther Party Dallas chapter uh, gave him uh, basically played bodyguard for him and protected him and defended him. And he got a level of respect and love for the, for the chapter because of that. And he and Aaron developed a kind of a friendship and they started talking and communicating during those times. Then they finally came up with the idea that, hey, since you ain't got a home, why don't you come in and join the New Black Panther Party under the thought process that if he's joining this organization, he's ready to take on this ideology and this belief system. Not realizing, some people did realize it, I guess, but 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 everybody didn't realize that a national figure like this, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, basically baby Malcolm X, and, and I had a lot of respect and still do a lot of respect for Dr. Khalid. I remember when he first introduced me to his videos and I started watching and studying the, the brother's videos all the way from the Donahue videos to any speech I could find on the brother. Keep in mind, we didn't have YouTube then. He never had a whole bunch of VCR video, VHS video tapes for us to watch with Dr. Khalid. So to finally meet the brother in the headquarters in Dallas, to finally talk to the brother, to deal with the brother, even when he came down with his son, uh, Lil Farrakhan, to, to deal with the brother was, was amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I had already been watching the brother and studying the brother and listening to the brother. But nobody realized that the heart of this brother was in the nation. He was nation of Islam, true and true. And that's not to make say nothing negative of the brother, but he was 100% die hard, nation of Islam from his head to the toe. So when he came in the organization and became the national chairman, then the brother nat naturally started operating as nation of Islam. And he started attempting to, to bring Nation of Islam principles into the Panther Party. And like you said, almost almost overnight, 
hundreds of people came into the new Black Panther Party from the Nation of Islam. Their mosque became Panther headquarters. They, they, they went from the suits and bow ties to Panther uniforms. So even though they looked like Panthers, walked like Panthers, they talked, they talked and thought like Nation of Islam members. Am I correct with all that? Yes, sir. All right. What were you going to say, E? I don't know now. Or, or was that it? You were going to say that? that? I would say it differently, but close enough. All right. I want to read something from uh from uh, uh, uh Malik Zulu Shabazz's book, The Book of College. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So let me say this, because I think it's going to be the click point. Um, so from what you said earlier, my understanding is you brought up the ideology that we scoped at first and then the mechanisms and the structure. So what I get is an undertone that your ideology creates your structure. Your structure grows out of your ideology. Ideology is the theory, whereas the structure is becoming more of the actual practice and putting it to play. Is that correct? Indeed. So we went from a an ideology of no of local autonomy, <clears throat> of constant growth and development, to one of uh, leadership that was based and rooted in a essentially Western uh, religious ideology, Islam, might as well be white folks, it ain't African, uh, <clears throat> form of leadership as well as ideology. And that that was attempted to be uh, a plan, a, a taken and grafted on top of the Panther Party, basically making uh, a, 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 a new nation of Islam or a, na a baby nation of Islam, a nation of Islam with guns uh, uh, at the time, which I remember that phrase. And there were those of us who were like, this ain't a good fucking idea to talk about hating white folks and carrying guns behind it. It's, it, it that's going to be a problem for us. But um, so essentially that that's what I'm hearing is that this 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 defending of an individual, just like the defending of a a a a, a, a um, what do you call it, a, a, an idea or a um, principle uh, uh, is counter to the idea of constant growth and development, because when you dedicate yourself to a person or a particular principle or idea, you end up defending that idea as opposed to critiquing that idea, building on it and moving forward. Is that correct? 100%. So <clears throat> then it makes perfect sense that it blew my mind the first time I walked into one of our fucking meetings and somebody was saying in the name of a lie, the beneficent, <laughs> the merciful, and it pissed me the fuck off. Because I knew what was going on. Yeah, yep. fucked up. That's all. That, that, okay, my bad. Go ahead. I'm you starting to do it. Calm yeah, it down. And one, and one of the things that uh, War said, one of the tenets of the party was to leave your religion at the door. Yes. And operate off religion. This was a community based political organization, not a religious organization. And that was a. Uh, how did y'all, War, how did y'all not see that there was going to be a problem in the beginning before y'all even thought about bringing I was simply I would simply say that we thought that it was a that he was sincere about building the Black Panther Party on the legacy of what the Black Panther Party was. Now I will say this, and I and, and it's probably just, it may go into what you're going. I don't know if it's going to be talked about from the store the standpoint of the or of the uh, the book, but me and Khaled and Aaron all we all use and, and David we all bumped heads a lot. Now. After Ka uh, after Aaron stepped down and me and David were 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 at the helm still from a national level, me and Khaled would always argue, and it got to a point to where we started respecting each other's point of view. And in fact, I will say this, and then we can go dive into this book. One of the things that is not not too many people know is that what had happened before Khaled it made his transition is that he finally got to the point to where he realized that we needed because he started seeing some of the failures of the way things were operating because he couldn't control it, that we need to create a national training uh, 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 location for the organization. And he wanted me to go down to, to move to Atlanta, uproot and move to Atlanta and be one of the, the, uh, the, the main people teaching and leading that. So at 
before he died, that was actually something that came to light in terms of a realization. And I say that to say that I believe that Khalid, had he still lived, probably would not have continued on the way he did at that point. But that's, again, a speculation. I would also <clears throat> I would also throw it in that people always want to associate Khalid with the ideology of black power and black power alone. And I think that has to do with a lot with the fact that that's essentially the nation's uh, uh, step. Um, if you notice the whole time, well, every time I saw him, the college was in the nation, whether it was, you know, whether it was on the cusp of being kicked out or whatever, whether it was in Donahue or King College, wherever he was. If you look at his hand, he always had that big old anchoring on. And this man would talk about the, the history and, and draw parallels uh, and, and lessons from our history in Africa. In fact, when um, we started utilizing our uh, some, some walkie talkies and whatnot, for uh, some of our maneuvers, um, when I show the brother, instead of having, you know, you, you want an ID. So instead of ID being, you know, Radio 1, Radio 2, I put them in Swahili, you know, Moja and Bili, Tatu, and I showed him to Khaled. Khaled liked that, but then he cautioned me and said they're not ready for that. So Khaled was already also a Pan-Africanist, and I dare say an Afrocentrist, uh, 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 aspiringly, if not already, but um, um, so, but people don't get that because others' legacies were to nip in the bud anything that would flow beyond what it is they were able to back up and would keep them in a position of power. So, and because if Khalid had continued down that path, and with our push being there, that essentially he would have worked himself out of a job to be a pan-africanist again your ideology gives birth to your to your to your hierarchy to your to your organizing and whatnot to your structure so if this brother's ideology continued to become and he was more free than he was in the nation because in the nation he can go full ham with africa because it would have fucked up the whole idea of islam and it would have thrown all of them under the bus. So he couldn't do that. He had to check that. But had he been in a situation with, say, the party, where the party was about that growth and development, he would have been pushed because there were thinkers just as dope as colleague within the party who would have pushed him <clears throat> and challenged, like War was saying, his own ideas and directions and all of those types of things. He would have inevitably, inevitably, because I know myself, had we gotten to the point where we had conversations about uh, Africa and, and all of those sorts of things on a deeper level, at some point I would have asked him, why are we not adopting a structure that's reflective of what maintained our societies for hundreds of thousands of years? And he would have had to confront that within himself because essentially he would have been working himself out of a job. But anywho, go ahead, brother. Let's, let, 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 let's tear it apart. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to read from this book. And to, to add to what y'all just said, I remember, I, I do remember because I took it as a as a personal, uh, I took it as a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the Personal offense? No. no a, a what? A compliment? Opposite. Yeah, I took it as a personal compliment that whenever he was in Dallas, he was always asking about those street brothers from Fort Worth. That's what he called it. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> he was always asking about it. So he saw, he saw what we what we actually were bringing to the party, but with uh with us talking about this history, there's a point in this book where they mentioned Dallas, and they mentioned you by name, War, but they mentioned Dallas, and I want to read this because I want you to kind of I want you to kind of uh give me your idea on this and what this is this is directly from Malik Zulu Tabad. This is the book that he wrote, the Book of Kali. So he said this. <clears throat> Page 453, he said, simultaneously, because in this, well, let me give you a little background. In this chapter, he's talking about all the different, uh, uh, essentially, attacks that Dr. Khalid had. He talked about Bobby Steele and them coming out them, trying to sue the party. He talked about all the different people that was in conflict with Khalid. And so he gets to this point. He said, simultaneously, reports came out of Dallas, Texas, that founding members, Robert Williams and Aaron Michaels, were plotting against his leadership. In the summer of 2000, 
Aaron Michaels quit the part in a leadership tussle with Khalid over the movement of all the new Panther recruits. After Jasper, the Dallas Panthers wanted to do open carry marches more often, but Khalid disagreed. Chairman Khalid felt that if the Panthers went out there too many times, too often, publicly with guns, with nothing ever happening to the Indians or black people, that it would diminish the power of, of the self-defense message they were trying to get across. Guns were for real action, not for posture, according to Khalid's thinking. He had got his self-defense message out in Jasper, and Khalid was about recruiting and building the party into a real national organization on caliber with the Nation of Islam. New Black Panther Party found that Michael and his Dallas cadre were not filling Khalid's religious proclamation and anti-white ideology, nor were they comfortable with the fact that, that as party chairman, Khalid had disseminated the New Black Panthers to 30 cities, and it appeared to have grown out of their control. When Michael resigned, he sent a certified letter to Khalid demanding that David Foreman be appointed Minister of Defense in his stead. Near September, Khalid informed me that Dallas members who were connected to Michael were circulating a news article allegedly penned by Thomas Thomas, denouncing Khalid as the chairman and distancing themselves from his ideology. When Chairman Khalid found out about this, he was seriously disturbed. Michael and his men had been hassling him all summer, back even to the Shaka Sankofa funeral in the summer of 2000. Khalid told me privately that if Dallas New Black Panther Party kept giving him grief over the New Black Panther Party, that he was going to forego the MBPP mission altogether and straight up organize under the name of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Now, I read that because in that time, you know, I went on my vacation in 2001. So this was around the time, and I remember these discussions and all this that was going on, but I want y'all's opinion of, of, of what uh, Malik said in, this, in the book on this particular subject matter and, and Aaron Michaels and his me and his cadre from Dallas giving uh, Dr. Khalid so much push. What, is y'all, what are y'all thoughts on that? Well, first thing I would say is that some of that is just a flat out lie. We were never ever establishing on the premises of using weapons to showboat and, and, and sensationalize. That was just straight up not the case. But now what I will say is that, yeah, the image did come across that this is what the media was wanting to try to portray, is that they were temp- attempting to change our image and, 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 and glorify that. But a lot of people, what a lot of people don't understand and not looking at this from as it applies to a counterintelligence attack, is that taking Khalid Muhammad and and in his and the way he basically would would uh use certain racial slurs and 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 come across to where, for instance, highlighting what he said at the at, at that one speech that got him kicked out of the Nation of Islam, talking about kill them all, kill the babies, kill the kill the kill the mothers, kill kill the kill the elders. That and you couple that with the image of the of the new Black Panther parties carrying guns, what was attempting to be done is to paint us as a terrorist organization. They wanted to come out to college. They wanted to come out to the structure and they want and, and they wanted to paint a negative picture. Maybe Malik didn't get that. Maybe Malik didn't get that. And also, with that being said, one of the things that's left out and truth be told, Khalid Abdul Muhammad had a relationship with Gaddafi. Khalid was attempting to work a relationship with Gaddafi off the back of what had happened with Louis Farrakhan and the four, I believe it was around $4 billion that Gaddafi said he was going to give the Nation of Islam. Well, now that Khalid, uh, Khalid Muhammad was out of the Nation of Islam, he wanted to rekindle and, 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 and also re- go back to that, that track and see if he could get money. The problem with that, because of some of the things that we were doing in Dallas, it was drawing what Khalid felt was unnecessary attention away from what he was attempting to do politically. And being that we saw things a certain way in Dallas, uh, like we did, we had the ideology intact. We had the way we moved. We had local autonomy. And so we was going to still make the moves we made, whether he agreed with it or not. So he was initially on board with the, the protests we were dealing with, the arm maneuver, should I say, we was dealing with, with Shaka uh, Sankofa. And at the last minute, he basically told all of the national other other chapters to stand down. And in doing so, 
The only chapter that did attend that with us outside of, of, of Dallas Fort Worth was Houston. Now, the problem with that is at the same time, you had an internal situation going on between Khaled and uh, um, Quan LX, who at that point in time was a national minister of information uh, of the new Black Panther Party. Well, there was internal fights going on between him in position and also even with Malik. And so between Khaled, Quanell, and Malik, they were dealing with uh, uh, central national central committee issues of, amongst one another. And so all of that even came to, came to heed when we uh, were dealing with the funeral of uh, of, uh, of Shaka Sankofa. Because at the funeral of Shaka Sankofa, we had people from the Panther, Panther uh, Collective and Panther 21 come down and come to find out they confronted Khalid uh, Muhammad in regards to some of the directions that he was doing. And see, this even goes back to something we'll talk about later in regards to an elder council. So there was a situation coming up to where Khalid was actually being uh, challenged by some of the moves that he's making in the direction that he's taking the new Black Panther Party in. He was getting heat from all sides, not just Dallas. And primarily the heat he was getting from Dallas was the fact that, again, the ideology was not being put in place and not being utilized properly. And this was causing him to not be able to even to control his members of the Nation of Islam that had converted to Panthers because where, where, is the, where is the work being done in the community? Where are the, where are the programs? How are you serving the people? How are you staying connected to the people so that you don't isolate yourself and, and simply become uh, basically a Nation of Islam with, with weapons? So Khalid was actually still trying to find his bearing. And then I want to jump into and say that after his death, mind you, well, even before his death, like I said, we were talking about a national training headquarters in Atlanta. One of the key personnel in, in, in regards to that had to do with Hashim Nzinga. Hashim Nzinga, who it was also from Dallas, who eventually became the national chairman uh, of the New Black Panther Party. The thing about him is that he worked with us to help develop what they call to be the, the Black Power Manual. And the first edition of the Black Power Manual came out. I want to say uh, right after Kyle died in 2001. So it wasn't until 2001 that other chapters started benefiting from some of the information that we were utilizing in terms of uh, in terms of our uh, structure and study in Dallas, Texas. Mind you. And we I remember sitting down and us going through the first draft of that and complaining that a lot of the information was was missing from this manual. And that's something that ended up continually being a fight moving forward. And so oftentimes I would teach information that was not in that manual to other people. In fact, not to dive too much into this, but when I ended up leaving the New Black Panther Party around 2006 had to do with the fact that at attempting to teach the information and given this position from a national position being uh, trying to develop the uh, Department of Research and Development, I was teaching some of the of the uh, National Central Committee and the, the offices of the New Black Panther Party. When I started teaching from the stuff that we were teaching our people in Dallas, Texas, all of a sudden it started threatening basically the control that Malik had over the organization. And Malik took it as if I was attempting to become chairman. Not the case. It was just simply a threat to him because of the knowledge they was ob obtaining that would re be able to would basically challenge his control and his grip over them because all of a sudden they're learning things about how the structure is supposed to be, which would actually enhance and make them actually be able to operate better through local autonomy than what's being able to do. So a lot of the local autonomy and things that it took for a, a local chapter to be for what, what we call functional was left out because. One of the things in that Black Power Manual is it, it just kept saying, refer to national, refer to national, refer to national. Because what was being done is the aspect of making a strong local was being replaced with making a strong national. Because it was more about making a, the national strong so that the national, the locals would rely upon the national. So what they did is they flipped the script one, uh, 180. They basically turned, in, instead of us the way we initially had it, to where the locals will operate in, in leadership within the locals will form the region, re lead, re leadership within region will form a national, but 
And all that being stated, the locals maintain their authority, maintain their control, and maintain how they choose to operate within a city as long as there's, there's basic guidelines and certain things that had to stay intact within those local chapters. When the Black Power Manual was established, which was, again, after Kyle's death, because Kyle was going to set up a national training headquarters, which I was going to be part of. The thing about that is this Black Power Manual removed the elements of, of, of the local autonomy and everything that it had to do with making local chapters strong, as well as accountable to the work that they're supposed to do in the community. And so that's the key catch right there is when you remove the, the things that required the local chapter to do certain types of work within the community, which connects them stronger to their local community, then it allows from a national position for you to be able to call chapters to come to this protest or this protest and you have more bodies to pull from when you want to work on national uh, uh, things that you want to draw national attention to as it re re revolves around protest. And so now hmm. that the local chapters don't have work that they have to be obligated to do in the local cities, people look forward to making trips across the nation and going here in, in ambulance chasing, going there in ambulance chasing and just being seen on a camera. That's the real essence in the story of what that's about. But now if I know I have to run these these local su uh, survival and living programs in, in my city, that means I'm going to be too tied up to be going on these national these national protests and these regional protests with you. And so that's why a lot of those things were removed, because by removing those, now the locals need some work to do. And so they look for the national to do the work. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. So what I hear you saying is there was some cats who were in a position of authority who were cock blocking the knowledge of self-determination from the masses of the people so that they could maintain their grip of control and authority over those masses. Is that correct? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so quick recap because we should get ready to go into this video. I just wanted to do a quick history because again, I, as I said, as I was doing the research for us to create this video, I noticed that there were so many people that didn't have an understanding that Dr. Khalid didn't start the New Black Panther Party. I even had one dude I heard I said said that. Uh, uh, Malik Shabazz steps down from the New Black Panther Party after 35 years of service. And I know for 100% fact that, that not only was Malik uh, Zulu Shabazz, no disrespect to that brother, was he not the chairman for 35 years, but he hadn't even been in the New Black Panther Party for 35 years. That's 100% impossible. So, I was 17 so, back 35 years ago. What the fuck? Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's insane. And so I knew that a lot of people just really didn't know because Dr. Khalid was such a charismatic and powerful and moving and inspirational figure that his presence automatically brought the New Black Panther Party into the eyes of those who worship the brother. And one of the things we got to understand is this. One of the things that we have to understand is this, is that one, all the brothers, sisters that came throughout our history of, of, of liberation struggle were simply human beings. They were people. And if they were 100% dedicated to the people, the thing that they were trying to do is show us how that we could be strong like them and not rely on them. That's one of the things you got to understand about what a revolutionary true mission is. It's not to have you can follow and work at him, it's to have you become him. That's the, that's the only true level of true revolutionary worship. Two is that you have people coming from the Nation of Islam, a religious organization, who believes that his top leadership is essentially a messiah who has been vested and blessed with, with divine knowledge from a divine figure. So when you have that, you're going to have people who follow the charisma of Dr. Khalid, who follow Malik Zulu Shabazz, the same way that people follow Farrakhan or follow Elijah Muhammad. So, but I just wanted to put that down. Now we're going to get, we're going to get ready to go into this video of Babu throwing his hat in for national chairman. We're going to look at the video, and uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to pull it out Facebook, but it's no longer there. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to look at another channel who did a, a essentially he did a commentary on it. There's a brother named, uh, uh, I believe his name is O.C. the Great. I don't know the brother. Uh, I, I'll text you one, ask you if you know the brother. 
he did. He said he was a, a he was once a new Black Panther Party member, and he had a lot. But we're not gonna get into him. We just want to look at Babu and what Babu said. But I had to give him credit because for use, we're gonna use his video to break down uh, Babu. So I go ahead and get started, and uh, you can chime in later. It's all good. So last night I made a post and I was saying that I would consider coming back to the new Black Panther Party. And my thing is, man, I actually, I actually meant that, man. I actually meant that. But here's the thing. I've been looking on Facebook and there's so much egotism, so much feminism, so much over masculinity that is basically man destroying the platform of the new black panther party when this goddamn organization was founded in 1989 under my brother aaron michaels it was not founded under the principles that is being governed by today and i'm not saying that today's leadership they have to do what they know, what they... I got to pause for one second. I got to pause this guy. We are... Uh, <clears throat> he's uh, giving his commentary, and we're going to give ours. Y'all there? Yeah. What come I can't see y'all no more? Because when you got the video playing, you can't. Oh. Okay. That it's in front. All right. I don't know what he said to stop, but uh, did y'all want to say anything on what he was saying so far? Nothing? All right. No. Nah. Up under the uh, the NOI. And... Uh, what? Let's, let's continue, you know. Ain't no best. Uh, my comrades, brother Malik, you know, they come up under the, uh, the NOI. And... That's how they uh, conduct themselves, and uh, peace and power to that, man. Um, but it is not the platform that the organization was intended to to be run on. The organization was intended to fall up under the ideology of brothers like Michael McGee, uh, brothers like Geronimo Pratt, uh, the Panthers, uh, Bobby Seale, Huey P. Newton, that was the original ideology of the organization was to serve our communities. And we're not going to get into the history of the Panthers and, and how the ideology changed. We're just going to jump straight in to today, man. It's been so much disrespect when it comes to the new Black Panther Party. And some of it is warranted. I'm just going to say that. Some of the goddamn disrespect is warranted, man, because to me, the Panthers have lowered their standards on the members that they bring in. There is no goddamn political education. Uh, there is no process to who you allow in this goddamn organization, man. I agree. <laughs> I back a lot of national committee, the central committee. I don't blame you guys because. There was nobody in front of you to teach you the proper fucking way. But the power is in the national committee. Okay. So I'm saying this, man, because I am a new Black Panther. Yes, we organized the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. The Huey P. Newton Gun Club is doing fine, man. It's a beautiful addition to our community. But I came into the struggle as a new Black Panther Party member, and that's where my heart is, man. So it, it fucks me up to see what's going on with the organization today. And I'm not blaming any individual, man. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm say my brother Malik. Malik is my brother. I love Malik. He just has so much that he is fucking responsible for, man. You know what I'm saying? He's got so much on his goddamn plate. You can't expect for Malik to do every goddamn thing. Then he don't have anybody that he can put in an authority position while he does what. I just think it is time, Brother Malik. This is just my opinion. And, you know, you can always call me, man. 
I think you better serve the people as a revolutionary lawyer of justice, man. I think putting those pigs in fucking prison, I think that means more to the people than for you to be actually running the new Black Panther Party at this time in your life. Well, he could do both. I don't want to do that. It's time for us to reunite the fucking Panthers. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you elect me, half of the goddamn Panthers that's part of the organization now, they're going to be gone. All the goddamn social media warriors, all the fucking revolution is not going to be won on social media. Motherfuckers have took to social media like they doing goddamn work. Nigga, that ain't no work, man. That's not no work. Social media for us is supposed to be used to give people examples of political change that we're doing in our communities, man. Feeding the people. We got away from that, man. Feeding the people. Dressing the people. Fucking medical programs, man. Everything that the Panther stands for, we have gotten away from. Even being involved in politics, man. If y'all remember, Bobby Seale ran for fucking governor of Oakland, man. We need to infiltrate every fucking aspect of white society. And while we infiltrate... Okay. Just a lot of the things that the... Man, I have your back, like always. James Steptoe, peace and power. It's time. It's 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 time for us to uh, bring the Panther back home, man. It's time for us to bring the Panther back home. So I'm reaching out to the National Committee of the New Black Panther Party. Mm-hmm. If there are going to be some changes made, they're not going to be able to be in the organization. Mm-hmm. Second thing, mm-hmm. goddamn hat for National Chairman of the New Black Panther Party. I think I can restore the honor not only nationally but internationally i think i can bring back the honor of the party what do i have to bring to the table the first thing is we're going to get rid of all these trifling motherfuckers that's okay. unconscious that if you don't want to take part in political education you're not going to be able to be in the organization second thing i would do second thing i would do i would put a term limit on any chairman of the goddamn organization and we will set that in stone and write it into the National Central Committee. Nobody's going to hold the goddamn party hostage for fucking 20 years. I put a term limit of six years. And after that six years, if you're not voted back in, uh, you know, if they want to get rid of your ass before then, the Central Committee can do that. But the most any chairman can serve will be six years, man. Because being stuck up under one person stops the party from growing man so i like that uh, Jackson. so this and i was fucking using us as token negroes to get their goddamn points across man we're talking about the conditions that our people are living in all over the goddamn country you just saw the photos from jackson mississippi and what condition that our brothers and sisters are living in not just Jackson. So, uh, if they go to North Dallas, man, I see these motherfuckers with dots on their head. They got some of the most beautiful fucking homes in goddamn Texas, man. Why do our communities continue to be in the condition that they're in? We're not doing shit to clean that up, man. So, I want to bring a new image to the New Black Panther Party. I'm still a member. Never quit. Still got my patches. Still got my goddamn uniform ready. I'm reaching out to the New Black Panther Party National Committee. Saying if there are going to be any changes, and it might not be, you might just continue to want to do the same old shit. In that case, you're going to have to leave me to start my own goddamn New Black Panther Party. It'd be another fucking split. But I can't continue to see a name drug through the mud. I'm going to say this. I'm about to get off. I'm about to get off. I promise you. So we had an issue about some brother. Uh, I'm going to say his name, okay, but I'm not even.
I think we I think we got to the basic meat, meat and potatoes of what uh Babu was talking about. So uh y'all just saw the video. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about this? My brother said he throwing his name in the hat to become the national uh to become a national chairman of the organization. And Malik Shabazz has basically said that he's stepping down from his uh from his position as national leader. Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all this right quick, and then we'll talk about it. Let me show y'all this. Here's the uh, here's essentially what uh, Malik Shabazz what he wrote. He wrote it on Facebook. He said, uh, y'all see it on the screen, but he basically says the new Black Panther Party shall formally elect a new national chairman. And six committee as of this day. So he's talking about new chairman and six committee. I will continue to be what I was since 2013. Now, as y'all know, that's not 35 years. It's 2023. That's just 10 years. That's not 35 years. I will continue to be what I was since 2013. The new Black Panther Party chairman uh, emeritus and a guide to those in overall Panther movement. Who have the capacity to listen and learn from me. I can consult with you if you are making sense to me on what you are doing. My legacy and track record in the struggle, and specifically in the New Black Panther Party, is secure. I remain full time in the fight, legal fight, against police brutality for full and complete reparation. When I am not at my desk hammering out hard litigation, legal work, you will see me out on the battlefield in the fight as usual. Nothing will change from Dr. Malik Zulu Shabazz. The liberation struggle can count on me. Yet every man, as he gets older, must evolve and grow. 35 solid years I have served in this struggle, and I shall continue strong as usual. The black struggle is all I know from a teenager. Okay, so the 35 years that Malik stated is his entire time in the struggle. And I guess the, the brother, uh, O.C. the Great, misunderstood that to mean that he had, he had served at 35 years as a new black Panther party chairman. Uh, national chairman, but anyway, the, uh, he said, uh, from a teenager, like Malcolm and Khalid, I remain 100% black nationalist and pan African. I believe in the teachings and the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Marcus Messiah Gordon. May the most high and the answers is blessed the new black Panther party to meet its upcoming challenges with as little turbulence as possible. May any force in existence help the overall Panther movement and this part of the black power movement to better itself, heal itself, correct itself, and hopefully have a meaningful impact on the complete liberation of black people. So ordered. Honorable Malik Aziz Shabazz, Chairman Emeritus, NDPP, National President, Black Lawyers for Justice. So that's what, uh, that's what, uh, Malik Zulu Shabazz wrote in, 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 in his response. So what are y'all comments on? Brother Babu's video, and what are y'all comments on what Malik did with your bad, bro? I'll let he start. Oh, hell. <laughs> you know I can't never start shit. Babu said he wants to be the national chairman, <clears throat> and he believed that he could take the new Black Panther Party back to where it was and back to his ideology and political education and things of that nature. You know, uh, does the new Black Panther Party need a national, another national chairman? Is it is it beyond saving? Uh, let me ask you this question, Walt. You on this panel, you're the member that's still active, and you have done. You've still been doing work. You've done work from Atlanta to California, from Dallas to Detroit. So you've done this work. And the circles that you moved in, what has happened to the new Black Panther Party name and image? Amongst other kinds of organizations and groups, elders, because you know, you, you know a lot of people. You know a lot of people. You know, you done talked and build with what General Taco in California. You done build with the Brown Berets. You done build with many of these brothers. Hell, we had Garuba on the show. What is what has happened to the New Black Panther Party name, and can it be saved at this point? I would say basically when. The essence of the, the 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 founding principles and teachings got lost in the sauce of from the national leadership, and that the structure got 
basically hijacked and removed from the local autonomy, which mind you people, when we say local autonomy, that includes local accountability. Autonomy means that you are held accountable for the work that needs to be done in your local community. Once you strip that from the organization, and now it's about, mind you, the national structure of the new Black Panther Party does not mirror the concept in terms of the national structure of the third development of the Black Panther Party was in terms of the way it's ran. So what happened was when the local autonomy part, which created the control and the accountability from a, of a local chapter in terms of what they had to do to be considered a functional local chapter or even a valid local chapter, once you strip that back and, and remove that, there goes the quality of members that you're going to have on a local level. That over time, because of, of that part being stripped and pulled back, it deteriorates what an actual, actual local chapter looks like from the new Black Panther Party. So you will be lucky if you get some people in that actually got the right, that they, they got the right stuff. In fact, you may get one or two locally in, in, in certain cities that actually got their act together and that actually did bring something strong to the organization. There was people, there have always been people around who uh, who would like that. One of the brothers, I, and I just want to give him credit on this show, named Devon Allah. Devon Allah operated on the Malik Zula Shabazz and he was somebody that was definitely on that path in, on, in New York region. And I would say that from the stance that he never received the lessons and teachings from Dallas, but still was already on the page of, of, of demanding discipline out of his ranks. Demanding that they learn and memorize the platform, demanding that they learn and, and, and go through certain discipline regiments in order to consider themselves to be members. So he recognized that that needed to be implemented and was very tough on his people when he when he was in the ranks. But in essence, because that structure did not carry on from Dallas, what had happened at that point, you, you had a, 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 a disarray in terms of the quality of people that you were able to bring into the fold. And this is one of the things that I think Kyler did not connect the dots to in his initial stage of, of operating nationally. But mind you, that was where Aaron was supposed to be moving right in with him. But if they're bumping heads and Khaled is able to travel nationally and internationally like he was and Aaron was not, then it's not going to we're not going to be able to keep up with the the level of basically unteaching that, that needs to be done before you get into the level of teaching. Because mind you, if I'm stepping into this with the mentality that this is going to be ran the same way the Nation of Islam is ran, but yet kind of sort of what a panther is supposed to be a little bit like and i'm kind of like learning that but yet i'm already in a in, in a uh, uh, a local position of leadership but i'm learning to figure out what it means to be a black panther in fact i may not even know what a black panther was until Khaled became a black panther and so i'm following him he gonna put me in position because i'm a loyalist and i would do what he say and i may study what he say but mind you i'm already in a position of leadership right so i'm already in position of leadership following my my religious leader to try to figure this thing out as to what is being as as what's called a black panther but mind you in dallas having having certain things in place to where you're supposed to be trained and then brought into a position and that not happening all of a sudden with all of these chapters you are dealing with a level of having to unlearn in order to learn what needs to be happening and any time and we can just use that as a basic example if you got somebody in their 20s late 20s 30s or 40s and they have to unlearn what they learned to get to that point in their life just so they can start doing what somebody normally would do to the first time around as a pound as opposed to having to unlearn yourself and then relearn yourself you are a step behind somebody that can come in off the streets as a Black Panther who was trained directly to be a Black Panther, who stepped through those doors because they wanted to serve the community first and foremost. So now when I'm training somebody that wanted to serve the community first and foremost, then the way I train them is com in terms of them taking that information in is completely different than me having to replace my religious doctrine with a community-based doctrine and i was never somebody that was 
involved in a community before, but now I'm doing it because I'm being told that we are now a this organization whose foundation is based on this. So I'm hoping to learn and, and do my best to try to decide how it looks to be somebody that is a service to the people, but yet being guided by somebody that is my religious leader. So right then and there, that that whole dynamic is going to create messiness. And I'm not saying that it was intentional. It's just inherent inherent in the nature of how the operation started out from that from 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 Khalid Muhammad. That's going to create that level and that bubble of mess that has to be undone just so we can move forward. And mind you, in the course of trying to undo that, that means that mistakes are going to be made. Damage is going to be done and we're going to lose seasoned pe veterans that may have even came from the third development because we even had people that came from the third development that joined the New Black Panther Party because they are just now from their city being exposed to this and decided they want to recap. In fact, uh, I, I got the uh, hats off to uh, National Chairman of the, of the People's Black Panther Party, Yang Nkrumah, his father, Abdul Kahar was a part of the third development and decided to join the new black panther party not because he needed to learn how to be active but to continue the legacy of what he was already doing right and so falling under a national leadership but knowing the local autonomy aspect kicked his ass and his chapters behind because they had to suffer between me knowing how to already do things as a Black Panther and me having to adhere to the, the, to, to the policy that's being put in place by a national body that don't know what I know, that ain't been through what I've been through as a parent. So you take those kind of dynamics and mix them all up in, in the thing and you got even more confusion because you got people coming in that are, are, are following Khalid, but they under Abdul Kahar. Abdul Kahar is saying this is how it's supposed to be done, but yet my national chairman is saying this. They, it's it's it, it's creating it, it creates a, a a mess, a big ball of mess, and these kind of things were happening anytime we did have the support of veteran uh, uh Panther members from the third development that was in the ranks and worked with us. Again, even going back to uh talking about the Ruba Ben Wahad, who was always there with Aaron Michaels and and Geronimo Pratt. Once he got out of uh, out of prison, was was close to Aaron. But now, mind you, this is already after Aaron has stepped away from the New Black Panther Party. But what I'm getting at is elders like uh, um, the Ruba Ben Wahad, who was always there to help and, and guide Aaron in 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 the movement when we were operating before Khaled. Mind you, you didn't have this problem, but come along college in 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 that whole mix up and things that that happened and even after college death death it just got worse and worse and worse because at least college based upon the level of knowledge and, and intellect that he had he would have been he was much better suited to do it than malik and hashim simply because of what what college was internationally mind you so here comes hashim who's attempting to hold things together Basically, just say, you know what, let me at least keep this at the at a standard that it is when I got it. And then Malik coming in behind Hashim after he died and and still kind of like just trying to run things the way he knew to run things. But again, running things away from the essence of the local autonomy that was attempting to be pushed through the organization and, and to keep in check when this stuff was presented to Malik. Many of times that we had our national summits, it was presented. He said it was way too deep, too heavy. They don't need that. And it was constantly rejected. It was rejected. And the problem with that is when you want to keep people dumb, dumbed down to the certain obligations and, 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 and responsibilities they're supposed to have on a local level, you create a weak chapter. Creating weak chapters mean what? You're going to have people that's going to make mistakes. When somebody open when they open their mouth and somebody asks them, well, what does it mean to be a, a a new Black Panther member? What does it mean about the work that should be doing being done in the community? Why ain't this stuff happening? And so when you have that going on, then all they know to do is go to the national. When they go to the national for that, because they don't know how to answer a question in terms of what they should be doing locally, it's a shame. It's it's a complete mess up. And so that's really what, what went down. So some of the things that Babu was talking on, he's talking from the perspective of what he's seen in Dallas. Not to say that he 
was a part of all of that structure because that's that's a whole different story in itself in regards to him. But what we but he was exposed to the fact that there was discipline that was required from me when I was in the New Black Panther Party. There was certain levels of political education that was in place that was required. And I'm not seeing this across the, these other cities. So he he knows, at least he knows that that was the case. What was the question? The question was, what do you think about Babu's video and the statement that Malik Zulu Shabazz wrote? And uh, essentially, what direction should the New Black Panther Party take? Because Babu is talking about becoming the new national chairman and revamping and reorganizing and reuniting the organization. And I'd ask Roy, and he, and he so didn't answer the question. I asked him what was the overall sentiment of other type of organizations and type of uh, formation, uh, even original third development Black Panthers when it came to the new Black Panther Party. Okay. And what, what skipped around that? I did yeah. answer the question in my way. You know, okay. <laughs> Well, I don't talk to nobody, so I don't know what the hell they think about it. And to be quite honest with you, probably couldn't care. <laughs> other other uh, uh, folks think about it because the reality of it is, OK, let me say this. Well, why cycling? So we need to push pause on the recording. Now, go go ahead and do your thing here, Eddie. It, it ain't no fun without psyching here. Yeah, do y'all. Oh, I said y'all start the conversation. Now, so okay, so I remember when Kyle and I say this for a reason. I remember when Kyle came would come to town. It got to the point, and it's nothing ragged or anything. It's just the way it is, and y'all can check me if I'm wrong. But when Kyle would come in, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying about how he liked or was always asking about them cats from Fort Worth. When he would see me, this dude would grab me and bear hug me and, and pick me up to the point because, you know, that's a big, heavy dude. You know, I'm a little skinny cat. And, and, and I had to tell him a couple of times, I can't breathe, brother. You got to let me go. And the reason he did that is because uh, uh, when he came to Dallas, I know I myself was the one that was given a bulletproof vest, no pistol, and was told if somebody tries to shoot Colin, you take the bullet, we'll take care of the rest. That was my job. And I say that because people are going to say, oh, he hating on Kyler, wah, wah, wah. It's not true. I just recognize what is. And like we were talking about the the, the structure and, and all of these things and how it's falling apart and womp, womp, womp. For me, and y'all know ideology is my, my baby, the most hurtful, most detrimental thing Kyler did or the most detrimental effect of Kyler coming into the party was the usurping of party proper Panther ideology. That's what we used to call it. That's what I'm still going to call it, proper Panther ideology. Because that ideology got arrested, got was crystallized in a form to serve in the way that the hierarchy, the ideology served within the nation of Islam. And so the legacy to me of Khalid, of Malik, is one of arrested development. The masses of the people were not allowed to grow because they wanted to maintain a position of authority within the party. And I think if we keep on playing into this Messiah complex, into this GOAT theory, you know, having the greatest of all time, Khalid, bow down, blah, 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 or Malik or whatever, then nothing about the party is is going to change. It can't change. It's going to get worse because the structure is going to be built, predicated on an ideology that doesn't even fucking exist. There is no ideology within the party other than to say black power. That's it. Not everything else Malcolm said about black power, just the words black power. You know, we live in a society in a day and age where you can say anything and it means whatever you want it to mean, no matter what the word is. I get tired of hearing people say, oh, I'm spiritual. Basically, that means you don't want to go to church but you want people to think you still believe in God. That's all spiritual means anymore. 
It's all tulips and daisies and bright sunshine and shit. Don't talk about the dark side of spirituality or the, you know, just want to be happy. It got nothing to do with your happiness. But everybody and their mama says, oh, I'm spiritual. Don't have a lick of knowledge about the shit. Same goes with black power. You don't know what black is. You don't know what power is. You don't know what a democracy is. People think that the U.S. is a democracy. The United States of America has never been a democracy. It's, if you put your hand on your heart, your right hand on your heart, everybody follow along. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. The U.S. is a republic. It is not a democracy, y'all. But yet and still, we think that folks with which. Today, they don't even have that much of a, a, an un, a, a, an awareness, democracy, and I have no idea even what the words are. But leaving it in the hands of folks who don't have a grasp of proper panther ideology, what ideology is, what structure is, where it comes, none of those things is going to continue, going to, continue to spiral out of control as those who clamor for the top position now to fill this void at the top continue to do what they do and they will be there doing what they do when uh college passed when you know malcolm passed all of every time it happens every single time and we keep on talking about how folks are going out and protesting doing the same thing over and over being the definition of insanity these folks clamoring for power and us within the party and i'll always be a member of the new black panther party uh college called us the most rebellious uh, a chapter of the most rebellious organization in the country. And here we are, the Panther 48 being the most rebellious uh, clique of the most rebellious uh, organization uh, in the country. Um, so that's forever where, I, where I'll be. But if the New Black Panther Party really wanted to be revolutionary and step beyond the boundaries that have been prescribed by the legacy of uh, at least two men who sought to maintain authority and power. I mean, let's be real. If we voted on it based on the merits of what actual concrete shit has been accomplished in those past 35 years, as you want to say, uh, 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 what exactly has Zulu done? What exactly did Khaled accomplish? Not a fucking thing. The Dallas chapter of the New Black Panther Party was more effective in its community without them refusing to go along with what they put out. Because what they put out was uh, a control mechanism. And for whatever reason, I f for some reason, a whole bunch of halfway intelligent, refusing to, to be manipulated and controlled motherfuckers showed up at the New Black Panther Party uh, meeting uh, on, a, on a Thursday night in a, in, a, in a library over on Martin Luther King and set off some shit. And that, that's us, by the way. Just so y'all know who I'm referring to. Uh, it just, it's just really weird. Motherfuckers that think like we do and refuse to be, you know, to cow down because somebody's got position and power. It's just real weird that all of us showed up at the same place at the same time, falling on the heels of somebody like Aaron. That, that, that was, uh, what is it? Uh, divine. Um, but if the party wanted to really be revolutionary, then outgrow its clinginess to black power look at some of the other ideologies that were present as they were put down by those who created developed maintained proper panther ideology it's not proper panther ideology to have one king on top controlling all the pieces the masses of the people are supposed to control them the masses of the people are supposed to make their own decisions amongst themselves if anything if there's just a need to have some type of national structure, then why not base that national structure on a structure that has maintained our communities for hundreds of thousands of years? Why are we clamoring and trying to hold on to this European concept of, 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 of structure, of hierarchy? That's not how we roll. That's not how we do. It would make much more sense to have a commission, to have a council of elders that are there to provide information and guidance to those local chapters as they practice that, that, that local autonomy. That will make so much more sense and be so much more revolutionary than anything the party's done up until this point. And that's just the way it is. But as long as we keep clinging to this need to have somebody to tell us what to do and wipe our asses and feed us, whether they're white, 
black, whether they're Christian or Muslim or whatever, we ain't never going to get out of this mess. That shit's too easy. Chop the head off, motherfuckers go crazy. Stop doing that shit. It's time for a new mode of thinking, which is an old mode of thinking. But me personally, niggas ain't finna do that shit. I'm so tired of nigga shit. As soon as somebody step out of power, we, we throw a hat in the ring because it's all the fuck we know what to do. Fuck that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. Khalid and, and, and Malik joining the New Black Panther Party was the single worst thing that happened to the New Black Panther Party. Period. Because it fucked up everything. We were fine. We were fucking fine before college showed up. Be honest about it. We were fine. We had our Thursday night meetings. We were getting getting ready to go do the whole Jasper thing and everything else that was going on. We were fine. We had membership coming. There were other chapters in other parts of the country. It didn't do us any good. It helped them far more than it helped us. So me personally, fuck that. Fuck the legacy of that cat. Fuck the legacy of all them cats. It's not about the legacy. But if you want to talk legacy, what really came out of that? They fucked up the ideology. They fucked up the structure. And the membership of the New Black Panther Party is as in the dark, ignorant, deaf, dumb, and blind today as they were 35 years ago. So I don't want to talk no more. <laughs> and that is Brother E. Now, <clears throat> let me, let me, let me uh, I got to go back on something you just said, Brother E, because it, I think it's worth looking at, it's worth investigating. You're saying that it's essentially a mistake to think that you got to throw your head in the ring, think that it got to be some top dog at the top, and basically we should get rid of that and create a council and do something revolutionary. Because revolution means to bring something new about it. So really be revolutionary and do something revolutionary and create a council of elders with no top dog. Maybe, and this is just me brainstorming, maybe it would need to have a national spokesperson who is not the top dog. He is nowhere near as more powerful as anybody in that council of elders. His or her responsibility is only to articulate the ideals of the organization on a national basis. And I remember even back then we were talking about that would be uh, Dr. Khalid's job when he was coming into the part. I remember we were discussing that. But nobody having that supreme commander top position, but it being held by a council of elders. You know, that, 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 that does sound very revolutionary. And it makes a lot of, it makes a whole lot of sense. If it worked for the mafia, it should work for us. You know, they had a commission with Lucky at the top or supposedly at the top as a spokesperson, but everybody voted on, you know, uh, what moves to make. If there was somebody out of line, you had to get permission from the commission to hit them. You know, all of that shit. No power, no authority, simply there to serve, period. Start with the old cats that are still around <clears throat> from Huey and M days and move through it and create a council that has a discussion. But cats ain't going to do this because when college, another thing when college and them came around, all of these college wannabes came out of the woodwork. I ain't never seen so many cats going, you, 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 and you, you, I mean, just doing college mannerisms and trying to move like him and shaving their head and walking like, trying to walk like him and talk like him. It was just fucking pathetic. It was horrible. I could see the shit crumbling in real time. You know, I don't really like your mom. I give a fuck about that. That's not, we're not, we're not with that. You can't even say the Honorable QEP New. You got to say the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We have no allegiance, no alliance to the nation and the ideology or the, the leadership of it. They brought that shit into our shit and made it into some bastard organization. Marrying the two things together and fucked it up. And it was sad to watch that shit happen as it unfolded and not being able to do anything about it. Because you know you know, we cried and bitched and moaned the whole time. Like, this ain't going to work out. This ain't going to work out. But the shit happened anyway. And lo and, and behold. And one that wasn't listening to us. Mm -mm, they're hard-headed. You know, all these years later, we look back and say, yeah, Khaled fucked up the organization. Yeah, I said it. I don't give a shit how much you love Khaled, worship Khaled or whatever. I said it. I was there. I watched it as it happened. Khaled bring in what he brought in and again i don't believe he did it on purpose i believe the brother was sincere he was sincere when he cracked my goddamn ribs so you know i i i i i i, I but i have to be honest him coming into the organization fucked our shit up 
I don't give a damn. I, I was probably back then, he was what, 51? I always mm -hmm. I remember we were young, we were in our 20s. Mm -hmm. And I remember being shocked at how hard his body was. Yeah. Was yeah. Yes. That shit hurt. I wasn't playing. I couldn't breathe. The man would hug me and shit. Ah, uh, that shit hurt. But yeah, he, I mean, there could have been good aspects, but the reality of it is, motherfuckers' egos are too big. Kyler was never going to bend and be under. Uh, 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 Aaron or anybody else just wasn't gonna happen. You know, Malik tried to ride the same train, whatever, but he wasn't gonna operate under anybody else. Motherfuckers' egos are too goddamn big for this shit. They're operating under the mentality of being an individual and pursuing their own agenda under the guise of what is going on, or just the fact that they really think they're the shit. Khalid could say that a little bit, a lot more than than Malik. But because Khalid had the credentials, you know, sometimes when the motherfucker is just so good and, and, and they walk around with their nuts in their hands, it's like, well, he is good. You can't really say shit about it. I mean, he, he a braggart or he, a, you know, e e ego, but he good. He earned it. You can't say that about, about Malik. I'm sorry. And your book, your book's a piece of shit. I know, wrote, I left a little review on Amazon for you because it's garbage. You, you, you got it. One dude on there said you got a bromance with with Kylie. Get off his tip. It's over. Fuck this shit. I've never missed words about how I feel about Malik and the shit he was doing again because I was there when it started and I watched the shit happen. So it was the same shit that I'd seen in other organizations. You know, Malcolm had to leave the nation and all of that shit ended up in him getting murdered. Similarly, Khalid was put out of the nation, had to separate from the nation, and was going down that same path. So it's not a coincidence. He showed up at the party's door, cats with guns, to have his back. And I ain't knocking him. Did what he had to do. But that's just a piece of the puzzle that you got to be aware of. He was a man. He was going to protect himself. So he did what any intelligent motherfucker would do. He went to the ones that was even more crazy than the nation of Islam. But yeah, they they fucked it up. They fucked up everything. That's a deep perspective to look at. I don't think a lot of people like to be honest like that and really just analyze that. That's a deep perspective to look at. A lot of people gonna hate you for that news. But I uh, know. <laughs> okay, I got a question for War because I know we get getting late and uh, we, I went into that history a little bit deeper than I wanted to. But I got a question for War. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talking about structure and y'all keep in mind, listening audience, do not let this go over your head. But he proposed something revolutionary. He proposed no national church, a national committee of elders whose job it is to guide and teach Panther ideology to the to the local chapters, but still preserving local autonomy. So that's something to think about. But uh, the question after that, Brother War, is because Brother War was there, and and even even though me and Brother E was there, our pay grade wasn't high enough to be in all those rooms. <laughs> the war was able to be in. <laughs> you know, we were just local minister of information and chief of staff while war was walking around in those national rooms. But uh, the question I want to ask is about national structure. I would like war to kind of go into what the national structure is supposed to look like and how it's, the, how it's supposed to operate. If you don't mind, uh, Brother War, for the listening uh, audience. All right. Now, for this, what I'm about to do is, is share the screen and I'm going to show you all a few things. Now, this also goes back to uh, something that uh, David Foreman uh, mentioned uh, on, on, the on the show he was on with his last and was basically saying that he feel like one of the mistakes that I made uh, uh, in, 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 in regards to the national was not releasing uh, the structure to the general public because by doing so will hold the MBPP accountable for what people know that they are supposed to know and how they are supposed to operate. So today I'm going to give y'all a taste of what that is. So you and people are aware, because the fact is when the community knows what a panther is supposed to be, then a panther has to turn in, in turn, live up to the expectations in, in what they are supposed to be. And that's one of the whole aspects of suppressing information, which was what was done to the national, uh, by the national at the time, 
uh, to the local chapters because they wanted to keep them under, the, under their grip. And so well, those are the things that I continually try to fight against. Uh, so now let me go ahead and share the screen and then we're going to talk a little bit about this. Can y'all see that? Yeah. All right. So the first thing here is the first aspect is this is what, what we were working with initially in terms of the operation. You had your cities that had the local chapters, the local chapters operated through a state. And then, then you had the regional central committee. And then you had uh, the regions that formed the national. And then we had other political formations that are supposed to be working with us to establish what? What do you see? A provisional government. That provisional government in turn will work with an international central committee and flow through other uh, nations. This is how it, it was proposed, part of how it was proposed in terms of operate. Now, the thing that that a lot of people wouldn't recognize that don't make sense to them. Maybe the fact that we talk about other other formations actually operating within the uh, alongside of the central committee that worked under a provisional government. So even from that standpoint, the MBPP was not supposed to be its own entity in in allowing someone and in, in, in the chairman be at the top of, of the helm. But even that was supposed to fall under a, a provisional government and that provisional government at the time what we was working through was the Republic of New Africa. So in essence, that was supposed to be the structure in which the, the new Black Panther Party would start falling on. Because point number 10 on the platform stated that we are supposed to be working toward a what? Nation state. That's what people don't even recognize now. If you go back to the 10 point platform that they operate on, uh, the new Black Panther Party. And, and, and now I'm all, all I'm talking about is some of the holes that are in there. When you say you're going to a nation state, that means you need to be talking about a provisional government. Nowhere in any of the document of the Black Power Manual does it teach anything about provisional government. That's because aspects are missing. Now, the next part of this, it goes into what he was talking about. At the very top, what do you see? African Unity Council. That is what is supposed to be at the very top. Through that, there are supposed to be two branches that a, a niche, a, a, a eventually would be formed, whereas you have a, a military wing and then you have a governmental wing in the middle would be your chief, your, your chiefs of staffs. So oftentimes one of the things that I used to hate that was done and said wrong, that was way out of context, was you hear people call either Khaled or and then they started calling Malik the black power general. How can you be a general and a chairperson at the same time? Something ain't right about just even saying that. And then where is the chief of staff operating from from that standpoint? And what you see here is also chief of scientific studies that work, work and develop the Office of Development for the government and then Office of Research for the military. These are the things that we was, I was attempting to try to get us to work toward. From that, you would have what we call the mechanism structure. And we'll go into that a little bit further. But the initial aspects of the mechanism structure had the infrastructure mechanism, which at the helm of that, you jump down and you have Minister of Justice on one side for the military branch and Minister of Politics on the uh, uh, government side. Through that, you flow and had your economic mechanism, community mechanism for this, for, for the right side, for the left side. You had the defense mechanism and information mechanisms. And then through that, you flow down into your other mechanisms, other mechanisms and other uh, operations. And then. From there, you eventually get to what we call the African state. And then we would operate through ranking membership to create liberation zones. And then also you create from that standpoint, African communities and then African black sales. And then that would flow to the new African people. So these are the kind of things that the, the new Black Panther Party members never saw in a membership manual, which are the things that was attempting to get pushed, pushed nationally to help develop a structure. So. Again, this is just the same thing blown up to show you how how that structure is. And so folks at home, they, you can stop your, you know, stop the video and look at that, look at that chart. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the different mechanism aspects. So again, we had then at that point in time, we had the infrastructure mechanism, defense, information, community, and economic. And then we had the different departments and held and, and leaders over those departments that should operate those. So in name, at the very top, Infrastructural Council, which we called the Elder Calibrator, 
And from that standpoint, basically, that means that the elders are responsible for making sure the organization operated accordingly and uh, people were held accountable according to what they're supposed to do. Now, the internal operations is supposed to be held by the local chief of staff, whereas the external operations are held by the chairperson. And the chairperson can be a male or female, which is why it's referred to as person as opposed to chairman. Um, Minister of Justice falls under that on the left side. Minister of Politics falls on it on the right side. From there, you have the community liaison officer, minister of community programs, field chancellor, field secretary, block organizers. On the left side, you had your minister of defense, minister of health, field marshal, and field medic. And then you had your staff sergeants that followed into that. The next tier would create what we call the minister of culture, MOC. At that point in time, that's what it was referred to, minister of information. Then you had your field commander and your field scholar. And then commanding officers to oversee the, uh, the, the task and duties. And on the right side, you had the Minister of Business Development, Minister of Finance, uh, Field Project Manager, some most people not even heard of, Field economic, uh, Economists, and then Resource Developers. And so these are things that, that were left out of the membership manual. And so in talking more on that within the Infrastructure Council, the Infrastructure directs chapter development with Via Elder Board liaisons, the Infrastructure Council will assist in mechanisms with generational foundational growth, critical analysis, and future momentum to set a cornerstone of empowerment. All relationships of the core, which we get into, work through and towards full Black Panther continuity, and therefore must adhere to the what? Elder Council advisory input. So kind of going into some of what he's already saying, this is what was presented and what was supposed to be going on. To the national and, and these are the things that i was teaching that got me in trouble by the national and the goals are to repair the linkage between the elder middle generation and youthful black panthers and the bottom line with that is again like we said some of the uh elders that were part of the third development were operating within the ranks of the new black panther party knowing more way more in terms of what it means to be a panther than a lot of the young heads but because of the way the national structure was operating you had people in charge that was basically ignoring and and downplaying and shooting uh and shooting aside the wisdom of some of the elders and what they brought to the table as well as the community programs that should be going on and then from there we have uh, several positions and i'm not going to read that again you can stop the video and see this but different different positions and this is not all of them that would basically go into the local operations and notice also how we say field marshals field scholars field chancellors project managers youth ministers field economists field secretaries commanders medics so these are positions that multiple people may have depending on how the operation go Another thing that is left out is what we call skill levels. This goes into the, the training that must be done to, to the membership. Skill level number one is what everybody that says that they think they want to be a Panther must go to. Required to become rank and file in the uh, rank and file membership, period, point blank. You have to at least go through skill number one to even be able to say that you was a Black Panther, to be accepted in the ranks. And moving in today's time, what we deal with now uh, in, in San Diego under the, the Black Panther Party is that before you can even uh, once you become a member through skill level number one, you before you even earn your beret, you have to have so many amount of hours of community service first and then you get your beret. So you don't get your beret just because you finish skill level number one. Now that you've learned what it takes to be a, a, a Black Panther, you have to prove show and prove that you're going to put in the community work that it takes to be a black panther before you get your beret. And that ain't got nothing to do with protest. Nothing at all. Level number two, required to run a service program. You have additional training that is required just for you to be able to say, hey, I'm going to run a service program. Skill level number three, required to hold a leadership position within a chapter. Skill level number four, required to hold a regional level position. Number five was required to hold a national position, and number six required to establish international relations and assist with formation of international chapters. So these are the kind of things that weren't even taught in the Black Power Manual, but I've been, but I've been around. Another thing that throws people off that they don't get is the difference between framework and methodology. A framework is a foundational concept that holds the chapter together. 
the rules, regulations, 10-point platform, bylaws, orders, and local objectives. That is the framework. The methodology is a process of steps, uh, is the process steps to carry or out the goals, which are the three D's, the three P's, organizational structure, the mechanisms, PE classes, and skill level training. A lot of the members don't even know what it means to deal with the three P's. They've heard of the three D's because that's define, develop, and defend. And that made it into the local objectives, but not the three P's, which is perception, pursue, and preserve. Those have to coincide with the three D's in order to make them effective. So that was left out of the manual. More pound to ideological integrity. How often do you hear that? That goes into what Brother E was also talking about. More, let me say it again. Moral panther ideological integrity, which addressed by which is addressed by the bylaws, rules, regulations, and leadership oaths. Some of the oaths were added in the Black Power Manual, but not all of them. And and those oaths, but with with those oaths come responsibilities and accountabilities, and also what was a part of it that that I believe did not make it in the Black Power Manual, or uh, if it did, very limited information did was that each person, once they get a leadership position, they became basically they had 90 days to prove that they could operate within that position before they actually got promoted to that position and was a list of, of, of skills, duties and requirements in order to carry out that position. Next point, types of orders. This is something else that uh, that it more than likely did not make it in in the Black Power Manual, definitely didn't make it in the first editions. General orders, which everybody talks about all the time, but that's typically all you ever hear them talk about. Specific orders supposed to be on the table, special orders, committee orders, local command orders, regional orders, and national orders. And there are more orders than that. But the point being, orders, period, have to do with specific uh, operations and, and guidelines that uh, a person is supposed to follow while operating in the field or doing the duty that you're supposed to do. So there are supposed to be actual orders given to everybody according to what they're what they're dealing with. Now we get into the essence of what we what we brought to the table within the Panther 48 as well. Uh, New Black Panther Party mechanism structure. The cores, which we will break, these are breaking down what we call cores. Core stands for kinetic operation resistance engagement. The first original segment core was the field core, brought into operation by Dallas Chief of Staff, Brother Syke. So Brother Syke, like he mentioned earlier, he brought the field cores in, into fruition in Dallas, which was the defense mechanism, resource mechanism, community mechanism, and information mechanism. It was later changed to resource mechanism from economic mechanism because we need we started realizing that people were forming and turning into black capitalists. So what we needed to do is separate the aspects of economics and what people refer to as money from the actual resources that it takes in order to make a community intact. And so we needed people to think on a broader level than it just being how, how to make money. So it has to do with the resources. Defense mechanism says directs the party defense, security, health, fitness and, and social uh, readiness, critical thinking. That's where you introduced it to critical thinking, which goes back to skill level number one. The very first thing that should be introduced to anybody wanting to be a panther is critical thinking. Under the resource mechanism, deal with the identification and util utilization of resource development, control and design. Community mechanism operates all external affairs, relations and community service programs. So if you have a community mechanism, you must have service programs in the community. If you don't have service programs, you can't have a community mechanism, period. Information mechanism generates information. Propaganda handles the political and academic education. Notice we talk about politics and academics because you got people walking around who ain't don't have enough education to be able to even operate within a certain level. And so we need to we need to help work on that. Now, this is the element that was added later that was definitely fought for. And, and, and I kept fight, trying to fight tooth and nail to get added, which was what we call the continuity core. From that, we had the infrastructure mechanism, which is the foundation, which houses the curriculum and body of resources, which go back to the information and all of the documents and all of the types of training and all of the SOPs that are supposed to be carried within each chapter. The architect mechanism, which is we call our advancement, employs our design via social reengineering, mind you, pattern recognition and other forms of building. Now, the institution mechanism, which called generational wealth, refers to our conducive skill fostering and growth of ingenuity. So all of these things together 
come up and create what we call the continuity cores. So these are the things that are, again, left out of the information that was provided, supposed to have been provided to new Black Panther Party members. From that, we got what we call the life core. And verse one on there is the identity mechanism. Contribution of Dallas, MOI, Brother E. This is what you all, this is why you always hear him talking about culture, culture, culture. Which And so the identity mechanism, which brings forth culture, because unless we have a proper knowledge of self in our best efforts, we will emulate our oppressor. Bottom line, if you don't know what you're fighting for as a Black Panther and because you don't have knowledge of self and you don't respect and, and, and have the a understanding of culture, nothing else is going to make sense. Next one, laboratory mechanisms handles our research, experimentation and development. That is where what I was attempting to bring to the stage and move us outside of just the basic aspects of com basic community service. So it had to do with what we talked about earlier, how when we said that the, what the third development brought, what the new Black Panther Party was going to do was going to elevate based upon having that initial foundation and build from there. So the idea here is that we was going to take Aaron Michaels and all of the things that he was teaching and, and where he left off was to take the the essence of what the 10 point platform was, spread it out, make it a 14 point platform. And then from there, be able to even move further and start adding the meat and potatoes on it on, on, on onto the structure, which is where the Panther 48 came in. Next one being the engineering mechanism, which controls the ingenuity, talents, labor, scientific advances and means of production, because everything that we say when we talk about black power don't mean a damn thing. If we don't have a life core, don't mean a damn thing if we're not producing and becoming producers and empowering the community. So these are the things that the local chapter is supposed to know as memberships of the party. And these are the kind of things that they are supposed to be implementing in working towards. Last thing here is what we call the survival core. And this has to do with how we engage our people because this is where we find the community. This is where we find folks in disarray. First one being what we call the coping mechanism, which explores the glues. What are the glues? Glues have to do with, with how most people all see themselves operating, which is either guessing, looking, understanding, or through emotions and survival. So those are what we call the glue factors. The glue factors is where our people are because most people are guessing their way through life in terms of what's going on. And then when something good happens to them, they refer to it as luck. Because why? Because it hadn't been intentional design because they didn't intend, nor did they plot out a, a direct path of empowerment. So they got lucky. And then understanding what that basically means that through the basic educational system that the enemy provides you, they teach you to understand something. Whereas as a people, if we want to rise above uh, our oppressor and be able to put ourselves in a position, like we say on our platform and deal with uh, uh, self-sustainability and, and, and self-determination, we have to be able to understand and overstand. So we can't simply just understand and think we're going to be free and work toward liberation or even have the, 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 the mentality to study liberation. And then the next one being emotion, because too many decisions are made off of emotion. Too many things that we do in a community and as an individual is based upon our emotional state as opposed to logic. Next, the last one being survival, because we are the, we are in a state of survival as a people as opposed to living. Also, when we talk about the community survival programs of the third development, the point is that they are supposed to transition into living programs. And we recognize that within the New Black Panther Party founding principles. And so therefore, the essence of doing these programs had to be had there had to be a course of elevating. At some point in time, the, the Black Panthers are supposed to pull back from these and the community is doing it themselves. And then we start elevating and elevating and raising the community. And before you know it, you look back and that community is being self-sufficient. So survival must turn into living. So the coping mechanism is where we see ourselves with that. Now, self-displacement mechanism addresses the conditions of emotional traumas, psychops and addictive, destructive habits as a result of our collective neutralization as a people which is why we find ourselves doing way more mobilizing than we do organizing and why we find ourselves having a whole lot of organizations that are not able to do what we call deal with direct uh, synchronization, direct action through synchronization. So we ain't all on the same page at all. Everybody splits off, splits off, splits off. And just like we heard earlier, even 
uh, Babu Amawali said, hell, if they don't elect me, I'm going to split off and start my own. Uh, we keep we keep subdividing. And by doing so, now we're going to drop off a little bit more of our foundation, a little bit more of our foundation. And we head continually head down the path of deterioration. Last one that we find ourselves in terms of what we see with the community is what we call the denial mechanism, which is is based on our inability to let go of being domesticated and clinging on to the abusive relationship that grafted through the breeding of a slave mentality. So the denial mechanism means it goes into saying, well, when you encounter people that say ain't nothing wrong, we shouldn't even be doing that. We can vote and just leaving it at that, not realizing what it really means to talk about freedom. And so these are the things that were left off and even more so. But this is stuff I want to expose now when we talk about uh, the uh, MVPP that was left off of the national level. Well, we appreciate that, brother. We, uh, I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of insight from just seeing that. We're getting ready to bring it to a close, so I'm going I'm to I'm bring one more question. Uh, and y'all be looking y'all be looking forward for the future because we're going to bring David Foreman back. By the time y'all see this video, the David Foreman video has been dropped, and I believe it's for the first time David Foreman has given an exclusive video. Am I right about that, Juan? I have these, yeah. Uh, down this, uh, so for the first time, you get to see David Foreman on the Panther 48 channel. So with you breaking down what has been developed historically, what he's saying, what he has said, the world is our thinking on the direction that the new Black Panther Party needs to take when it comes to leadership. Can we can we cap the night out with that? With that thought? Well, you got any saliva left? Say that again, the last part. You got any saliva left? No, sir. We need to we, we need to wrap it up right now. Mm. <clears throat> well, I'm going to say what David Foreman say in order for the party to be productive and move forward. Is. Something along the lines of if if the people had value, we wouldn't need money. If the party is going to do any of those things, it's going to have to start instilling value in the people. Because the people do not value ourselves or each other. We value the oppressor's trinkets and toys above our own. So the only way for us to move forward collectively, and that's the only way we're going to move forward is, is as one, uh, <coughs> is for us to begin to impart and instill some type of value in the masses of the people. The masses of people fight for themselves, fight for their shit, fight to be free when they find value in themselves first and then each other. We are not doing that because we do not value one another. Well, my statement, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this because you started it like that. I'm going to say something else David Foreman said in our last interview with him. And that is, we have to go back to being who and what we are. You know, he said that, uh, that uh, I forget what he said he identified as, but he said what you identify as determines what you do. Kushite. And if you a Kushite, he identified as a Kushite. And if you identify as a person of African descent, if you identify as an African, if you see yourself as a black person, then you have to understand that historically, traditionally, we were builders. We weren't purchasers. We were builders. We weren't people that bought things. We built things. So in order to get back to what we are and to be who we're meant to be, we have to become builders. That's what I identify as, okay? So my actions are supposed to reflect what my belief system is. I know that the pyramids were built, and we also know one basic thing. They keep discovering more and more pyramids. They also, from time to time, discover new chambers within the giant pyramid, which tells us we come from a people that did what? They constantly built. They never stopped building. That's who the hell we are. We're builders. We're not purchasers. You see what I'm saying? We're not buyers. We're builders, which means the civilization that we want to live in and the things that we want to do, we're going to have to build it. There's no way we're going to ever be able to buy it. What the fuck are you talking about, okay? I'm your partner, okay? You're not going to trust me with that kind of thing. Who the fuck are you going to trust? 
Join your party. Bullshit, man. Yeah, don't talk to me about press, I don't mind. You know what? You should listen to your wife, man. She's right. You are an asshole, man. Come here, give me a kiss. Come here. Come here. Hey. Hey. Hey, fuck you, man! Who put this thing together? I got humbled when I found out how hard folks worked in this shit. Sarah Gudger from North Carolina wrote, Never know nothing but work. Never knew rest. Felt like my back was gonna break. This the gospel too. Slaves on sugar plantations like Cotton uh, was a plantation in Barbados, were systematically worked to an early death. When slavery ended in the United States, slaves imported over the centuries had grown to a population of nearly four million. When it ended in the British West Indies, total slave imports of well over two million left a surviving slave population of only about six hundred and seventy thousand. More than twice as many slaves were shipped to the island of Jamaica alone in all thirteen. North American colonies combined, the Caribbean is a slaughterhouse. In fact, the reason why there was more importation of slaves to these plantations is because they died so frequently. They were treated so badly, ate so poorly, that females never reached their menstrual cycle. They never actually started. Or menstrual cycles, so they couldn't reproduce, you see. And so many of them died, they had to import more. That's how treacherous it was, you lazy black folks that you are. Who do I trust? Who put this thing together? I got humbled when I found out how hard folks worked in this shit. What's so ironic is black people run from the shame of feeling like they're perceived as lazy. Who put this thing together? I got humbled when I found out how hard folks work in this shit. White people think we're lazy, you see? Right? And then our ancestors would work to death. To death. Recently they unearthed a slave cemetery in New York City. It's on Wall Street, by the way, in the shadow of the bull. Unearthed a slave cemetery. So here in all these skyscrapers in the middle of it is this little cemetery. And there's slaves in that shit. More important than that was what the bones told us. The most phenomenal thing about the bones is what they told us about those people and how they lived. The majority of the people in there were children, infants and children, high mortality, infant mortality rate. Right? They even know what they died of. Died of uh, malnutrition and starvation. Because they could tell by the rotting of the teeth and the jaw. So even though they most likely grew food, they weren't allowed to eat it. And then they found something even more peculiar. They would show a large frame man, and they would find an injury where the muscle actually detached itself from the bone as a result of exertion and not injury. Stay with me. It, it detaches itself from the bone as a result of exertion. That means you work so hard, the muscle detached itself from the bone.